Hello, I'm Wendy Burton, I'm a GP from Brisbane and I'm here with my colleague Dr Di Poe, obstetrician. So Di, thank you very much for coming along to talk to us today. The topic for today is the use of contraception in the postpartum period. So Di, I'm going to start with the first six weeks and I'm deliberately starting with the first six weeks because in my 31 years since graduation I've looked after two women who had two babies in the one calendar year who were not twins, that is they were pregnant within three months of the birth of their first child, one of whom was pregnant at the six week mark where unfortunately I gave her mumps, measles and rubella vaccine. So I'm a little bit pedantic about contraception option for women and I must admit for the women in my care abstinence would be the number one contraceptive choice in the first six weeks, probably closely followed by condoms. But can I get you to talk perhaps for a moment about the lactation amenorrhea method known as LAM? Yeah, so a lot of women will be of the opinion that if they're breastfeeding that would be a reliable contraceptive method for them and there's some element of truth in that that it is a reliable contraceptive to an extent but it relies on them demand feeding, feeding frequently, three to four hourly during the day, at least six hourly overnight. It does not allow for any supplementation with formula, water or food, so that once the baby's receiving anything else, it's no longer a reliable method. And when we say reliable, it's 98% reliable if they're doing all those things, um, feeding regularly. Um, otherwise, there's still a small chance of conceiving right through all the lady at six weeks, presumably. So I guess with that, my concern always is that we ovulate before we menstruate. Mm. So for women who are using this as their sole form, form of contraception, um, there's just that element where they might be caught out. But I must admit, 98% yeah, sounds pretty good. Yeah, well if you look at some of the other contraceptive methods, condoms for example, they're mm -hmm. not 98%. They're not, are they? <laughs> um, so, so certainly for most women, that will be a, a reasonable option. But for women who really want to cover their bases, I guess the next most common after abstinence, condoms and lamb would be the progesterone based contraceptives. So um, can you perhaps talk to me about the use of Mirena immediately postpartum or at what point can Mirena come into the play? Is there a risk of expulsion? What's the story there? So the Mirena progesterone only containing IUCD, there are some studies showing it can be inserted at the time of caesarean section. I have to be honest and say I personally haven't done that yet. Um, you potentially might need to anchor it into the uterus because the cavity is large and the cervix may be open a bit and with the extent of bleeding there's a higher risk of um, the uh, IUCD being extruded. So that's in the order of about 12%. So the need to know that there's a possibility it won't stay put. Um, but if it stays in, then that's a good time to have inserted a device that's going to provide contraception from then onwards and have no impact on breastfeeding. Mm -hmm. What about the strings though? What happens or how do you then do the changeover? Yeah, so the likelihood is you're going to be putting this device in at the fundus of the uterus in the hope that as the uterus involutes it ends up still sitting in the right position. That may not come to fruition and also the strings obviously are not going to be sticking out through the cervix. So coming to change that device will probably be technically more difficult than if it was placed postnatally further down the track when the uterus had involuted and the strings were out through the cervix as per usual. So the uterus involuted, what are we talking there, two weeks, three weeks, four? Yeah, probably it's back to close to a normal size within two or three weeks. So if you were looking to insert a device postnatally, not at the time of birth, then four weeks onwards is probably a very reasonable time frame to do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any concerns about their bleeding or anything we should be aware of? You would want to be certain there's no suggestion that they've got an infection or retained product, so the bleeding pattern needs to follow the norms, which is, you know, bright red loss down to brown um, and then pink, and as long as it's following the natural course and the uterine size is of normal size and non-tender, then you would expect that that would mean the uterus is empty and it's appropriate to insert a device at that time. Okay. When it comes to the other progesterone-based contraceptives, obviously we have the Depo, we have the Implanon, and we have the Mini Pill. Uh, anything to differentiate those three from your preference? Um, well, some of it's to do with convenience. So Depo-Provera 
you can insert that postnatally before a patient goes home, but there is the problem with a big dose of progesterone and the impact of that on mood at a time when a woman's got a lot of stress going on and may already have some emotional issues um, antenatally that you're aware of. So you would want to be cautious about giving Depo-Provera to someone that might have depression problems. Um, there's the associated risk of irregular bleeding with Depo, but it's probably less when it's in, given in the postpartum setting than at other times. So I think if there was a high need for contraception and that was the patient's preference, then I would probably consider giving it, but otherwise deferring till later on, once you've seen how the postpartum um, time goes for the woman might be better, perhaps at four to six weeks. Um, for Implanon, because it um, has an impact on ovulation, it can also have an impact on mood. Um, have to be honest and say I've never put one in, but I've taken a lot out, um, and I, I think there's a reasonably good track record in terms of contraceptive efficacy, but it has some side effects as well to do with mood and irregular bleeding. But certainly it could be inserted postpartum at any stage um, that it was thought appropriate. Uh, and the other um, option we discussed was... Unicum. So um, most women don't necessarily require contraception as soon as they leave the hospital. Um, to be honest, most women, when you see them for their six-week check, are not sexually active because they're so exhausted, aren't they? Mm -hmm. uh, but um, we would probably think it's reasonable to start a contraceptive method between the four and six week mark, and a mini pill is a completely appropriate way to try and manage that in someone that is breastfeeding. Mm -hmm. In prescribing a mini pill, which I did this morning for someone, in fact, it's important that they are aware that there has a difference to the combined pill they've probably taken previously, and so they'll need to know that they've got to try and take it at the same time every day which can be quite difficult when they're feeding an infant, so they need to be aware of that. Um, there's a window of three hours with, with, during which they should try and take it each day so that it's effective, um, and it takes about four days for it to become effective in terms of the progesterone. So if they're missing pills, they need to use an alternative contraceptive method for the next four days um, in order for the survival of to be thick enough adequately. Okay. What about the combined oral contraceptive pill? I mean, if a woman's choosing not to breastfeed or for whatever reason cannot breastfeed, uh, could we use that straight off the bat? So a woman has an increased risk of having uh, a pro-thrombotic status immediately postpartum, and that really is effective for probably a couple of weeks. So you wouldn't be wanting to give estrogen in that first two weeks, particularly after birth, because of that increased risk. Um, potentially after that, it might be reasonable to consider doing that. and so. Probably uh, we've traditionally not used a contraceptive pill till at least six weeks, but we could realistically be prescribing it around about three to four weeks actually, and that would be quite safe once the pro-thrombotic risk has gone. Okay, all right. So, so in summary then, um, contraceptive options to be commenced in the first six weeks postpartum, we have abstinence, condoms, lactation, amenorrhea method, we have the progesterone-based contraceptives, so uh, mini pill and the IUD, the marina, perhaps in advance of Depo, at least until we know if a woman's mood has stabilised. Uh, Implanon, the same consideration uh, as for the Depo. Uh, and the combined oral contraceptive pill, uh, once she's past that hypercoagulability state, so perhaps more towards the four week postpartum mark. And actually options such as the NuvaRing as a combined um, contraceptive would fall into the same category as the combined oral contraceptive pill. All right, thank you.